So mm -hmm. you probably recall seeing graphs of functions before, and this is another way to describe a function. Moreover, you probably are most familiar with graphs of functions when we define them um, on the set of real numbers, on the set of integers, the set of natural numbers, where we can plot them according to this Cartesian product, which usually contains a set of integers, numbers, real numbers, etc. And so if we consider the following two examples, we define a function from the set of integers to the set of integers by a formula. And this may be the most familiar type of function to you, one that is defined by a formula that specifies exactly which integer is mapped to which integer here. And then we can also represent that function in terms of the graph. So we consider each integer and map it using this formula to another integer. So in particular, 0 would map to 1, because 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 would map to 3, because 2 times 1 plus 1 is 3, and so on. And there are a number of other images that do not appear in this shrunken graph, but we know that it continues. Similarly here with the function f of x equal to x squared, notice that we're defining it as a function from z to z, so we only map integers and their squares. So 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and we would continue for every integer both positive and negative values. If this was a map from the real numbers to the real numbers, then we would join these dots, and this would be the graph of that function. So this gives us two other ways to describe functions. So first we have the arrow diagrams, which are normally used only for functions between finite sets, where we can specify exactly which sets map, which elements of the set map to which elements of the other set, the domain to the codomain. We can also identify and describe functions in terms of relations, to, so listing the ordered pairs in this way, but we can also specify the function uh, map either in words here, so describing how b is calculated from a, using a formula, or then representing it in a picture in a graph. Okay, so now that we have identified all the ways to define and represent functions, now let's look at some specific examples. So we mentioned in the learning outcomes that it was very important for us to understand what the floor and ceiling functions are. So let's begin with the floor function. So the floor function is going to be denoted with these, what we, we will call floor brackets. They're brackets that have a little floor in them. And so this function is defined from the set of real numbers to the set of integers. And so for every real number x, the floor of x is defined to be the largest integer less than or equal to x. So, for example, if we take the floor of 3.5, that means we drop the decimal part, so we just take the integer part. So 3.5 gets mapped to 3. Um, similarly, if we had taken 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.7, 3.9, .3, they would all, all of those decimal points would be dropped, and we would map it to 3, the largest integer less than that real number. Similarly, Similarly, the floor of any integer will be itself, because that's the largest integer less than or equal to itself. The ceiling function, on the other hand, denoted with these ceiling brackets, as we'll call them, because they have a ceiling here, is defined to be the smallest integer greater than or equal to x. So again, for every real number x, the ceiling of x is the smallest integer greater than or equal to x. So if we take our example 3.5 and take the ceiling of 3.5, it means we round up to the next integer. So 3.5 would map to 4. Also notice that 3.1 would map to 4, because as soon as it's bigger than 3, as soon as there's a decimal point, we need to round up to the next integer. So 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.9 would all map to 4. Similarly, as with the floor function, the ceiling of any integer is itself. So the ceiling of 3 would also be 3 because it is the smallest integer greater than or equal to itself. You need to be careful when you're dealing with negative values because the bigger the negative is, the smaller the integer is. 
For example, the ceiling of minus 1.5 is going to be the biggest integer, is the smallest integer greater than or equal to minus 1.5. So minus 1 is bigger than minus 2, and minus 1 is bigger than minus 1.5. So in this case, when you're dealing with negatives, you're actually going to drop the decimal part when you're taking the ceiling. And in the case of the floor, you're going to round down. So you're going to come down to negative 2. So the floor of negative 1.5 is negative 2, because negative 2 is the largest in integer less than or equal to minus 1.5. It may be helpful to look at the graphs of the floor and ceiling function to get a better picture. So this is the graph of the floor function. And notice that each integer is mapped to itself. So notice that 1 maps to 1, 2 maps to 2, 0 maps to 0, negative 1 maps to negative 1, negative 2 maps to negative 2, negative 3 maps to negative 3, and so on. So this graph continues in steps both up and down. So now let's look in between. So let's look at numbers between 0 and 1. In the floor function, they map down to 0. So notice that 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 all get mapped to 0. So we drop the decimal point, and they, they get mapped to 0. Values between 1 and 2 are mapped to 1. So anything bigger than 1 gets mapped to 1. Similarly, anything bigger than 2 gets mapped to 2. Anything bigger than 3 would get mapped to 3. As we go to negative values, notice that minus 0.5 gets mapped down to minus 1. Minus 1.5 gets mapped down to minus 2. Minus 2.7 gets mapped down to minus 3, and so on. On the other hand, the ceiling functions are going to get mapped up. So again, the integers map to themselves, so 1 goes to 1, 2 goes to 2, 3 goes to 3, 0 goes to 0, negative 1 goes to negative 1, negative 2 goes to negative 2, and negative 3 would map to negative 3. Now, looking at integers or real numbers between 0 and 1, in this case we're going to round up. So anything between 0 and 1 gets rounded up to 1. Anything between 1 and 2 gets rounded up to 2. Anything between 2 and 3 gets rounded up to 3. Any negative number between 0 and 1 gets mapped to 0. Anything between negative 1 and negative 2 gets mapped to negative 1. Anything between negative 2 and negative 3 gets mapped to negative 2, and so on. So hopefully you're able to have a better understanding of the floor and ceiling functions by looking at their graphs.